wisdom she's whispering oh, hold on let the scene unfold but i'm not listening you would not believe what i've just been told wisdom says sacrifice but your breeze is you're worth more than lies wisdom says don't look again but i feel my time coming now hold me back oh well i headed up the hill headed with this jargon hold me back oh well i had it up to here, hit it with this jargon, baby. When I, uh, when I'm shoved into an actual crisis, when I'm actually uh, in the process where it's like the state's gonna lock down all travel and uh, the supermarkets right, might run out of food, suddenly I feel the anxiety creep up. I'm like, oh, okay, what's what's happening? And suddenly, suddenly all my words have to be put into practice and i'm like no i'm not there again i'm not there or i have to actually do i actually I actually have to live up to the nonsense coming out of my mouth and so um i want to talk about uh basically just my attitude towards what's going on because i'm not gonna have any like brand new fresh takes or anything like that i don't really know what's going on obviously like uh there's been a bit of a crisis the old quarantine the whole shutdown and all that stuff and um I'm going to simply use this video as an opportunity, use this this situation as a portal to describe the the grounding realities of a lot of these ideas about developing a mindset and whatnot. Because basically, you have um, Nietzsche and Jordan Peterson and Jung and all these type of people, and they're all talking about developing a strong, profound mind, basically. They're talking about developing a good character and the reason why a good character is valuable is because when shit hits the fan you um it, it, it you survive you do the right thing you think well you you engage with the world correctly instead of crumbling under the pressure you're able to survive pressure you know now a lot of people think of good character as like uh you know the guy who walks into the room and gets all the attention and that is actually a facet of it and sometimes those people are the type that collapse when things get real but on the other hand usually the people who can you know do well in the room in social pressure are simply got strong characters because they're able to handle that type of social pressure and in this situation you're getting the pressure of uncertainty i often talk about the, the idea that fear is simply a tool that's trying to help you detect uncertainty in your world and say this is vastly uncertain and you don't have any plan for this so fix this for me please and so what has happened the last while is there's been just this massive amount of uncertainty that has dawned over the west i will say and uh people are kind of like oh my god panicking like what's going on oh my god what's what's happening what's happening and you can feel it in the air and so that pressure has been put on and now we need to discuss well how are you supposed to react to that mentally how you your how is your head supposed to bounce back off that how are you supposed to get a clear way of seeing with that and um this is what is interesting me now because this is a brilliant opportunity for us to individuate a little bit more to take a step forward in the mentality and mindset field of things to grapple with phobos the god and actually wrestle him into submission and stamp some order on the chaos and this could be a brilliant time for you to level up with your mentality or it could be a time that will crush you now first i simply want to talk about optimism prosperity happiness and peace versus this sort of cynical realistic downward negative social mood i started reading the red book recently of all the fucking books for me to start reading in these times because the red book is about young essentially feeling world war one intuitively in his soul before it happened in reality well that's a very small part of it but that is a, a part of it nonetheless um so I'm reading through that and Jung's talking about how he could like find it in his dreams and find it in his intuitions that World War One was going to come about. And I'm there uh, walking around my reality right now and I'm feeling that there's something a little bit off. I'm feeling that, okay, this is obviously, a, it seems rudimentary, a pandemic, a virus around. It's like, all right, you know, take a couple of weeks off and be be careful, you know, be, be healthy, social distancing and all that stuff. But then you start to see, you start to feel in the air that this is eerie. Like, it's not like anything like this has happened before. It's not like there's been this level of uncertainty and lack of clarity. You're seeing the, the leaders and they look a bit spooked, you know. So I'm not really, I'm not really sure what's happening. I'm just kind of like, oh my God, this is, 
this has been unnerving, you know, it kind of, it kind of strikes your nerves like a, a jolt of lightning. It's very sudden. It's very drastic. It's very um, uncertain, as I said. And, um, and then you're feeling that tension in the air, that weird atmosphere, the atmosphere of like, hmm, something's not quite right. You know, the same way as I remember 9-11 when that happened. I have a vivid memory of where I was when I saw it. And I just sort of had that vibe that it was a big deal. And I didn't quite know why, because I was so young. But I still vividly remember that. And it's it's it has this same sort of impact with this. There's this sort of um, vibe in the air. And there's this, I don't know, charge or something. And the more I tap into that, I'm like, this is a kind of creepy charge. It's that charge of eeriness, uncertainty. Suddenly, it's it's almost like you're getting pulled down through the fundamentals. You're getting pulled down to the idea that if supply chains were gone, what would you be able to manage? Like these type of things. You, It makes you realize how dependent you are on stuff like the system and whatnot. Now, I want to contrast this with the... 10 years that we've had running up to this and maybe even the 40 to 50 years we've had that are running up to this where we had prosperity and an upward bull run and happiness and, and like lots of abundant food and juice and whatnot and this is a time of goodness prosperity and success of health and, and wealth and happiness and easiness and the thing is is that like reality out in the jungle out in the world out in you know out there is um very dangerous and a very uncertain and anxious and paranoid place without the state filling your supermarkets without all of that stuff working without all the infrastructure working flawlessly without a without a you know when the herd has a virus or something like that what happens is you get shoved back into the danger the uncertainty the the, the bleakness of prehistory if you will where you didn't really know much you didn't have that all encompassing sense that there was a ordered civilized system in place that was going to make sure that nothing bad happened that keeps you safe you know that takes the lions out of the streets that takes the figurative lions out of the air such as the viruses and whatnot that takes that that always as i said has the food so you can focus on your higher goals such as you know making your music like me or individuating or whatever since you can focus on your leisure time you know but suddenly when all that gets ripped away the, the, the uncertainty comes in and you realize that that was all a bit of a bubble because the fundamental reality underneath it the lower reality creeps back into your life and you start asking those questions you're like what is actually like do, like what do i have am i st am i how would i be able to survive if i wasn't dependent on all these systems and whatnot and that's a, a very scary thought you start to see what reality is what survival is now as much as people find this eerie and difficult and scary these times, when you go from the, the great prosperity to the grounded, scary, dangerous, paranoid reality, the uncertain reality, there's actually something immensely cathartic to it. There's something immensely healthy to it. Because what you notice in times of upwards prosperity and happiness and all that is that it actually makes people unhappy. <laughs> it's it. Even though your belly is full, you have existential problems. And I've spoken to pl plenty of people like this, and they're like, "Oh, oh, I feel I suffer. I suffer more, even though I have all my wealth." You know, and you see the statistics, the mental health stuff sp spiking, and all this. People are all sad and depressed and whatnot. And and, and it's like the prosperity does not. It leads to indolence. It leads to it leads to the the sort of laziness, the decay of of decadence. These type of things, the 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 nihilism of decadence. And I'm like I can point this out in a very clear way. When you saw the sort of social mood there in the last two years turn into this this like immense abundant wealth we have everything you could order any type of food from anywhere in the world to your your feckin door with like a phone call and a magic phone that is connected to the, the the entire world's consciousness you know and despite that unbelievable abundance the sheer magnitude the sheer power of that the sheer amazing and um, uh, scale of that people were incredibly there's a lot of cynicism there's a huge amount of depression huge amount of anxiety huge amount of mental health problems like and and then there's this really deep nihilistic pessimism to it you know like shows like rick and morty show up and they're very very like they're sort of sarcastic and nihilistic they don't, don't believe the world has any meaning it's it will you know they they ascribe this sort of bitter um angled 
pessimistic, cynical, Schopenhauerian attitude towards the world and whatnot. And then that's paired with this sort of lack of reality to it. Think about it because I'm describing this sort of paranoid jungle mindset, this contact with the jungle as the grounded gravitas of reality, this the, the scary thing that you confront. But when that's pushed outside civilization and you're protected in, you know, the Roman Empire and the civilization, you're protected from the barbarians and the barbarism of and nature and whatnot, you get stuck in this bubble. And, and of course, you, you obviously go in because it keeps you safe but you forget that it's keeping you safe you forget how serious reality is and what happens is you feel nothing is real it's like Midas everything turns to ash in your mouth and you're like this is all I don't know this this is all this food oh I can get the food but what does it mean and then the world around you people start to get involved in some crazy stuff you know they start to get uh, some crazy notions in their head and it feels almost like everything's a parody and a joke and kind of fake and, and not really real or something like that you the abundance the prosperity creates this sort of sarcastic disinterested unengaged tone this um this 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 profound um, funny guy tone like the ability to just laugh at the world because you're so safe that you're above the world and then when things when you see a blip like this and i hope it's just a blip i'm just using this as an example to describe how you're getting a glimpse of how the mindset can shift so fast but you get a blip of shall we say hard times or crisis times or a blip a glimpse into reality what happens is all that lack of seriousness gets pulled out the plug gets pulled out of it and you get sucked down into the gravitas of reality and whatnot and suddenly you know the funny guy the funny guy who was like ironically distant or sarcastically distant from the world or who could you know spit down at the world or spit down at reality or civilization and all that suddenly gravitas punches him in the stomach because he can't defend himself he can't uh, su uh, supply for himself he's not sure he just realizes how vulnerable and uncertain he is and so I'm bringing up this sort of mood, this funny guy, sarcastic, distance from everything, the detached, I'm better, I'm above everything, I can laugh at everything, I can scorn everything. You see now that little blip comes and suddenly everything becomes serious and real. And there was even people who, you know, like had this sort of like sarcastic attitude towards the game because they felt something like this might be might be coming and no one was taking them serious. And so they, they developed like this, 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 this detached distance. They can't engage with the game. They can't just stay caught up in the game because they feel it lacks gravitas. But then the gravitas comes you know then the blip comes then suddenly the portal opens or shall we say the 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 the, the hands of civilization that are lifting us up into prosperity and the light let go and we drop back down all of a sudden and then we feel gravitas and reality and fear primal fear come back in swoop back into our lives and as i'm said you can feel it in the air the eeriness the the lack of of certainty and as i'm saying you know you can imagine in a village in the medieval times when the plague comes about and people start telling stories to themselves because out there beyond the, the horizon of your vision you don't have the internet you don't really know what's happening you don't really know what's happening and all you have is stories for each other and suddenly you start to see where these like funny fairy tales come up and the, the sort of spooky eeriness. You can start to understand what it would have been like to live back then when your vision was your horizon and all you had was other people instead of this portal into this super world that we have with the internet. Now, um, this is a fascinating thing because in these moments you don't get them often especially in our civilization this is a glimpse this is a feeling this is a portal into it and uh, it's been so interesting for me reading the red book because that's world war one and that's that's what world war one appeared to for people people built up this great deal of tension people like uh, um, bismarck was saying he had this like web of diplomacy across europe and he was like guys if you aren't careful to keep take care of this there's going to be a war because i can feel people itching for it and world war one like people it was a horrific war and a just disgusting mincemeat farm but at the same time there was a lot of people around the, um, around europe at the time that were itching for it because they had been through a hundred years of profound um, 19th century peace the absolute peak of european civilization had just been achieved they literally thought they were about to to, to 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 discover the theory of everything you know and world war one was just arising and they all had all these brilliant machines and they wanted to just use them you know and they wanted they wanted contact with reality again because as i said times of peace rattle our minds in a strange way because we need that contact with reality especially men men need that contact with reality and they're always 
hunting for it you know now the, f- the funny thing is is that it's easy to say that in your little bubble of civilization like i can always say oh i wish i wish things i could get more down to earth and real and get in contact with primal fears and all that but when it comes you're never ready for it it's horrible and you hate it and it's scary and it's difficult you know like i'm sure everybody thought a war would be great but then about a year into world war one when everybody was in the trenches losing like ten thousand people and charges and all that to machine guns and like gas masks and all that suddenly people were sort of being like okay maybe war is not as noble and great as we thought it was before maybe this is this is a little bit bleak the reality hit them so hard that they understood why people wanted peace (laughs) and so it's a funny it's the funny uh faraway hills are always greener problem with humanity where no matter what's going on you have peace you'll want a crisis you have crisis you want peace we're trapped in some type of cycle but we seem like we're going through this glimpse back into crisis and this is an opportunity for you to look at how the mind works as i'm saying you don't get happiness in peace you don't get it It, it's not a given prosperity does not mean that your mind is just going to fix itself you know it most certainly is a good platform towards developing your your higher leisure consciousness and whatnot but even if everything falls apart because peace does not guarantee happiness crisis also doesn't exclude happiness now i hope you understand what i'm trying to say here like if you were young or you were a young man about to go into world war one you could get extremely black pilled about it you could be like this is going to be the worst ever i'm going to die and it's probably true you probably are going to die but the thing is is that if you accepted that and said all right i'm going to die well you might actually live you might actually live as opposed to just sort of merely exist, consume, drift with this detachment, this sarcastic detachment from the whole thing. You could actually engage with it and experience crazy feelings that would not ever be accessible to you in a time of peace. You could say to yourself, I'm going to die fighting. And it might be meaningless in the scheme of things. It might feel that way. But maybe you'd be able to get a blast of what it means to experience the furious courage of a warrior from the millions of warriors that have been through the ancient past and many stories come out of world war one describing that where they say it was a terrible war but there was glimpses of humanity's peak excellence peak bravery peak courage and what some of the men stood up and did some men relished reveled in the the chaos and that teaches you a lot about what you can get out of stuff like this because it, it is bad and i don't like it i don't want to stay i don't want this crisis to get any worse but it is also a glimpse of the contact point with reality becoming the platform for you to build to to experience true life you know you're never going to be more alive than when things have consequences and the thing about prosperity is that very little has consequence think about the way we do stuff like uh sexuality you know this is a great example of this we've got so rich and civilized and wealthy that we can turn sexuality into this like incomprehensibly trivial pleasure you know and you have you know the 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 plastic sheath the condom to keep you to stop you you know having any consequences to sex and whatnot and it's it becomes very very uh, up in the air and trivial and that's great because then you can like do have loads of it and you don't have any serious problems you have to worry about life-changing problems you have to worry about but at the same time think of the damage this does in stuff like romance and love because there is no consequence it actually damages the act a little bit in a very strange way because imagine if you were back in the 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 tribal jungle and you know everything had to be raw and there was no there was no protection around everything had a real consequence and when you're with a woman when you're with someone the idea there is that this could lead to our destinies being bound together forever like think about that for romance the premise for that type of romance it was there was no question of should we wear a condom are you on the pill and all that are you taking drugs to make sure that this isn't real are you taking drugs to make sure this has no consequences instead it's like if we do this our fate may be bound together forever now think about that and think about how much deeper love gets in those contexts romance gets 
think how much deeper passion gets in that context in that context where that's the reality that's the consequences because when there's serious consequences you actually get serious feelings you get serious meaning you get serious experiences and this is what we would call something like existentialism it's the accepting that in some sense you're not going to get meaning and all these like profound ideas that we read about in the books without the seriously hard reality of consequences of faith you know you're never going to know how much courage you have inside yourself until you're faced with a task that causes you to risk your life you can't really get that in prosperity and peace but when a war shows up or a crisis shows up then you can start to see just what you're made of then you can truly start to see what your character is you know and it actually brings out your passion your romance your engagement with the world as i said it, all of this stuff gets falsified in times of prosperity to an extent and then you see people trying to get back back in touch with this i'm always trying to say this is that whole mindset of uh, uh run off to india or you know individuate myself or develop my character through reading and all this like that they're all attempts for people to get back in contact with the authentic with the real but they can't do it because their civilization is quite um stable and so they can't find things that have consequences because that would require them to do things that are essentially insane, take risks that are absolutely insane. But that's a hard thing for you to think about is that chaos and uncertainty is the foundation for risk. You can't take risks unless you're, unless you're facing chaos and uncertainty, the uncertainty of death, the uncertainty of sex, the uncertainty of, of, uh, of nature and whatnot. And then if you can't face the uncertainty, you can't face risk. And if you can't face risk, then how are you going to find courage? And if you can't find courage, how are you going to build your character? You know, you can't build your character in your room. It just doesn't work that way. It's an emotional thing. It's a psychological thing. This is what Jung and Nietzsche and all these guys are trying to say, is that it's a war you do with your, your emotions, your soul. And that's the one thing we want to avoid because they're un uncomfortable. Like we got a glimpse of a bit of a crisis mindset now and I didn't like it. I'm, I was incredibly uncomfortable there for a couple of days being like, whoa, whoa what's going on? This is going to freak me out. What's happening? This is, this is serious. This is a lot more serious than I thought. And I was sort of like, please send me back to my room so I can so I can read to the books and tell people about, oh, here's a cool idea. Oh, here's a nice idea. Oh, here, I'll edit this video and make it look nice. I kind of wish I was back there, but, but, but you don't always get to be back there. And now all the consequences come and you see your mindset clicking into gear in its more fundamental level. All of the, the chatter and the nonsense is just like out the window. It's like you're no longer useful for survival. Goodbye. Reality is here. We're going to deal with this instead. And that's an unbelievable glimpse into the way your mind works. It's an eternal rule. Look at this. This is a moment where you're going to see what actually matters and then compare it to the way that your mind was thinking two years ago where you were like um, overthinking about a lot of stuff that just was not consequential to the big picture. And so... um that idea that like th these moments give you opportunity to get in contact with the, the most profound parts of your mind and the, the character logical, the, the best parts of your character. As I keep on LARPing is that the Romans had virtue and virtue meant courage in the face of reality, of truth, of veritas. You know, and this is it. This is what you're seeing. We have this unreality, this matrix, this this sarcastic, fake, non-serious, funny civilization where everybody's well fed and everybody can joke about how there is no meaning and everybody can run around and be like, fuck, fuck, fuck at the system. But then the system suddenly gets stressed and everybody's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. The system's fucked. <laughs> oh no, what are we going to do? And then you get... Whoom, back down to that foundation and you feel this and this is what i mean by the idea of being alive like we're going to remember most of this we're going to be like whoa do you remember that coronavirus thing and we might go back in a position where we're like uh prosperity and all that and people will be like oh remember we all freaked out and it was over remember remember uber boy or stuck up that video and it was like over two days later now to further illustrate this i want to talk about suicide for a while because there's a very strange phenomenon i remember i uh, took LSD one time and I had a bad trip my first trip and then I went into um a lecture the day after to just try to get over it I was uh, I didn't sleep the whole night and I was like it felt like I was in a cartoon I felt like I was in an unreal sarcastic fake cartoon 
interest in that and uh, i went into a lecture just to try say all right uh, back to normal i'll see if this i'll try have a bad day today and then i'll go to sleep and it'll be over then and it didn't, it didn't end for a while anyway and so i'm there and i sit down in this lecture early in the morning not having slept at all i'm just like freaked out from this trip and uh i'm sitting down and it's uh, emil durkheim i believe and the thing that comes up across the the screen is suicide i'm like what the fuck is happening what and then I, I sit through a lecture on suicide and the sociology of suicide. And so basically what Durkheim said in that lecture, well, what the professor said that Durkheim said in that lecture was that during times of war and famine, less people commit suicide. And that's always very, very fascinating. I think this gives us an interesting way to look in something like the meaning crisis or whatever the hell people are talking about nowadays. And, and to look into nihilism and get death of God and all these problems and whatnot. Because... Again, going to this foundational problem, like our, our spiritual problems, people abstract spirituality into some type of intellectual thing, but emo fundamentally our spirituality is how we relate to our emo emotions. Our spirit is, you know, our inner inspired emotions that move us. Emotions mean motivation. S to be inspired is to be motivated. It's the same thing. And people think it's some type of intellectual thing. And look, it, part of it is, most certainly. Part of it's to do with your worldview and all that stuff. But they leave out this side of it immensely, you know. And the reason why I bring this up is because, like, mass suicide happens when there's lack of emotional stimulus to feed the, the shall we say, the chaos, the risk-seeking pattern inside a man, inside a, a, the soul of a male. Because the soul of a male wants contact with reality. That's how he gains status. That's how he finds his courage. That's how he develops his character. He knows that chaos will force him to be become courageous. Like deep, part of him, not his mind, part of him that's deeper than his mind, his soul knows that chaos and uncertainty and danger will be the perfect canvas to him to express his courage. And that will build his character and people will see him express his courage and develop virtue and that will get him status and that will make him be able to spread his dna because then he'll get rewarded with women and that's fundamentally the soul of a man if you want if you want me to put it in a simple picture for you maybe you can stop reading the books now there it is that's what you want that's what your heart wants the problem with prosperity is you cannot find that and so what happens is that soul turns in and crushes you and kills you and tries and literally picks up the gun in your hand and says end this because it's it's like your heart thinks there's something wrong. There's no contact point with reality. It thinks that maybe you're a slave or something like that. You're not allowed to express your courage. You're not allowed to prove yourself. And so your, your, your soul starts to think, am I a low status loser? Am I a coward who doesn't face things? And usually you are. Like I, I hear a lot of guys describe this and they're usually afraid to go for, for, uh, for extreme things. And then Sometimes you get guys that are so like full of testosterone, if you will, that they can't find anything to fulfill this. And so that depresses them. That, that starts to eat away at their soul. It's this soulful crisis. And you can understand why people like the Vikings, you know, they, you have a load of young men and um, they're all like anxious in the civilization the older Vikings had created, the older Scandies had created. And the older Scandies are like, guys, get the fuck out of here. You're, you're, you know, you're causing problems. You're challenging everybody for status. You're disrupting the peace. And so the Vikings sail out and take over the world for that reason. And it's that type of energy. It's that, that ambitious energy comes from this, as we say, this inner, this, this vibrant inner anima, animus, soul. What it, that's what the Romans would have called it, that inner soul is um, always seeking this type of thing. And so when you don't have reality around you, when you have the bubble, the matrix of civilization protecting you, you can't contact this stuff. And if you don't have a good mindset, if you have a, uh, uh, if you have a, for example, a religion or a set of rituals that don't bring you in contact with this, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, what initiation was in the past compared to the way our one works. If we don't have a way to give men access to that, they, this destroys them. They, they can't feel properly there's something is off in them you know and they start to develop the suicidal thoughts and the, the existential thoughts and the nihilistic thoughts and whatnot but then the second a war comes along all of those guys who had no meaning suddenly they're now afraid and they're not asking they're, suddenly the problem is not there is no meaning anymore then in, it suddenly becomes a lot more like oh my god can i survive
that maybe the, the problem will come in is like is it worth fighting for that's perhaps a little bit more of an intellectual existential question most certainly but on this more fundamental level once the comfort zone is pulled out a lot of these problems get fixed because suddenly men have the canvas for them to express their courage shows up again for, to express their competence and character shows up again and some of them adapt to that and, and that like pushes this out of the way and as i said you can get a crazy situation like war like world war one that can actually provide this canvas for men to develop to prove to show what they are to show the glory of what a man can achieve and the, the amor fati of his time the 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 fate of his time except like I'm, i might never be in the renaissance but i can at least paint the madness of my in my life on the the trenches or something like that and so suicide becomes a very very interesting thing in this context because as i'm describing here this is a glimpse into what i think your soul wants from looking at all this stuff about the myths and trying my best to push out all the the over intellectualization of it because that's what we that's our shadow if you will we have this propensity to over intellectualize but i'm um looking at what the the fundamental con consequences of it it's like it is people searching for that that contact point with reality that canvas and this is where i think the god question becomes very very interesting because what happens is you're in this trench you're in this crisis and you're you, you need to find your courage and you've got a problem because there's like the, the reality is incredibly uncertain and you want to jump out and tackle it well you don't want to but you know that you're probably going to have to if you want to survive you're going to have to go out and try kill a boar or fight a, a rival or something like that and you're sitting there in your head now suddenly you're not thinking about suicide anymore you're thinking about what if i what if i fail what's the point in fighting what if i fail what if i go out there and lose i'm, I'm scared now now i'm just genuinely scared and um you think to yourself well there must be a way that i can win i i hear this from people like john kavanagh conor mcgregor's coach and john kavanagh says um he says when he was learning to fight it looks like magic you know you have connor and he's like you know you throw you try punch him and his head's like behind your your head and then he's like kicking you in the arse or something like that and it looks like magic it's like he's teleporting everywhere it's like i can't touch him what's going on but john kavanagh had that experience looking at fighting but when he when he just spent some time studying it he found out that it just breaks down into some very very logical steps and it just takes a while to put it all together it's like lego you know you just put each piece together it's not magic it's a sort of engineered science and the end result looks like magic and i guess it may as well should be considered magic and this is um this is a, a very important reality for this this part of you to understand is that there almost always is a way you know and you can't quite grip how how big of a deal that is until you're in the crisis point until you're in the point where no longer can you intellectualize or can you have excuses and all this you have to say to yourself okay i need to achieve this goal i'm really scared i'm not sure how to do it but then a belief has to come in into you to say but there there, there probably is a way there, there almost has to be a way and that actually teaches you something about reality this is the the human spirit really shining right now saying that the canvas of reality can be chaotic we can almost never know for certain what's going on but it's possible for us to understand or there is a premise that we can say there is a, an order to the world like there is almost a way to do anything you know on a long enough timeline you'd probably figure out most things and this is the thing that has driven humanity forward it's like conquering problems and and looking at things that seemed like insane and eventually overcoming them like the idea of something like a gun you know it's it's, it's just a an advanced form of military technology to make killing more advanced there, and even when the first bits of technology start coming up imagine what something like armor was back in the day when you were walking around and everybody was fighting naked with clubs and then some guy shows up covered in steel he's literally like the terminator you, you hit him with your club and it just clangs and doesn't hurt him like that's amazing and, and and that's him finding a way to make himself harder to make himself less vulnerable to death then think of what it would have been like for um <clears throat> the the aztecs when the spanish show up with their guns and they're shooting but they don't understand how a gun works so it literally looks like a wizard like pointing out a stick and casting a spell like that's exactly what it would look like and that's 
uh, more evidence to the idea that you can achieve incredible things when you engage with reality properly for a long period of time. And this goes back to my LARP, my constant LARP about the idea that like a musician faces the chaos of music and realizes that there's a secret order hidden within it. And if he obeys that, he develops beautiful music. And that's a great piece to my soul as a musician. I can say, well, I can make harmony happen. I can do it. And when I do it, it will be beautiful and good. It's like the the, the world has a quote unquote logos or harmony or order built into it. And I do believe that's true. And then when you approach reality from this perspective, you, you realize the same thing is that even though everything may be chaotic and I'm going to have to risk my life in order to ga- engage with this chaos. There's a secret order in there somewhere. There is a logos. Whatever God built this, he stamped his fingerprint on it. And you, it may be hard to see, but you can find it. You know, maybe it's the Fibonacci sequence. We don't know. But you can find it. You can find that, engage with it and use it. And it will reward you with the good and the beautiful. It will reward you with strength and survival and success if you're diligent enough to obey it. And this is the whole project of science is premised on this idea that there's an order out there that we can engage with and it rewards you with success when you do it. And that's a fascinating idea. And so whenever I'm talking to people who are considering suicide and whatnot, this is always what I suggest to them because I notice that when I have suicidal thoughts and I I don't really anymore, but I remember I went through some rough patches and you're kind of thinking like, is there any point in going on? Is there any point in fighting? Is there any point in continuing on? And I hope to God I never have to wrestle with those thoughts again because they are tough thoughts and I get it. But one thing that was fundamental beneath that for me was that I always felt that I was not good enough and worse I felt that I was not good enough I was trapped and I will not be able to change there's nothing I can do about what I am I will not be able to change and become something else I will not be able to improve the 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 chaos of the world the canvas of the world the reality out there is too hard and I can't beat it I can't solve it but when we look at this foundational idea and we're talking about the, the realm of the spirit and the, 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 the energy of the animated soul that wants to tackle the canvas of the world but doubts itself and fears because it doesn't know how to win. There is a logos, there is a law, there is an order that you that exists out there and it's not something I can really say it's in the book and all this stuff. It just simply is out there and you can engage with it and it does reward you if you engage with it properly. Like it is that fundamental. And so when you're in a time of crisis, that's one of the most important things to remember is that you can figure stuff out. Things can work because there's a world out there that does work. Now, at risk of repeating myself, let's talk about the virtue of gravitas, because everything I'm describing here gives you access to this virtue. As I said, there's your soul knows, even though your mind not might not, your soul knows that it needs contact with reality in order to believe in itself, in order to think that it's a complete being, a complete man, a real man, a real juicy person. It needs to believe that it's able to come in contact with reality, discover its its virtue, its virtuous, its uh, its courage and prove itself. And that's the way it affirms to itself that it's good enough in some sense. You need to face the chaos in order to show yourself you're able to do that. And most people don't want to do that. Most people want to rationalize ways to avoid that chaos. This is a fundamental human reality. You must always call yourself out out on this. It's just the way your brain works. Instead of facing the simple problems like your shining, uncertain fears that are coming into you from all sides, what you're going to do is rationalize a complex world and plan for you to avoid that. And that's symbolically actually, or you could say fractally apparent in the way society operates as much as the way it operates in an individual. Like our society probably went through something similar where we build up this big prosperity bubble and we avoid the face, obvious problems that we need to sort out and then suddenly they come and they burst. And it's it's similar with us. We are rationalizing creatures. We're prone to self-deception and the greatest way to burst self-deception is actually not through reason. The greatest way to solve our problems is not always through this complex web of rationalizations, but it may be about facing things. It may require courage in order to progress, not some ability to figure out the labyrinth or the maze that's in your head. And this this is a very interesting thing. I know I notice Nietzsche is very good at pointing on this, and I've noticed people don't like Nietzsche because of this, because Nietzsche, like with his hammer, as I said, and, and taps at your palaces and he pokes at your rationalizations and he, he pulls at your webs and he, he points at the things you're avoiding looking at. There's this fundamental scary reality that runs underneath everything and people are like, wow, well I have all my um, morality and my thoughts up here that I uh, that I believe is the way the world runs. Like, 
for example, I believe that the way that society came about is that like a lot of people just came up and shook each other's hands wearing suits and said, let's make a great society. And everybody was like, jolly good, that's the right way to do it. Instead of realizing that what probably happened is there was a, cha a chaotic nature out there where everybody was trying to exploit each other. And what a being is, what you are is this lump of juice. You know, I am this flesh and this potential. And then there was a load of animals running around trying to eat my juice because that's all that nature really does is, is it it's a system of exploitation like it, it, it's always trying to compete against each other and so there was animals out there trying to eat me parasites lions whatever you want to think and then i with my will to power my desire to be able to express myself instead of be crushed by the reality because what reality wants to do is crush me and not allow me to produce my art not allow me to you know create this space where i can do higher things like produce art yeah nature wants to go out and eat me and crush me and use me for its aims the lion wants to eat me and use me so it can create its art which is to be beautiful and be handsome and whatnot and so um i i fight against the lions i fight against nature and then what happens is other powerful people show up and i want to express and create my art and then they come in and they see i'm some weak little artist like making songs mean like everything's nice and then um, they walk in and be like uh, i've got a gun if you don't obey me and be my slave if you don't work for me so i have free time to create my art i will kill you and then suddenly you start to see the foundations of uh the very very dark fundamental reality that, that runs these things or, or harsh fundamental reality that runs these things is that your privilege your privilege your ability to create these spaces to do higher order things are rare difficult and fought with blood and just unbelievable will and sacrifice and whatnot because the world is always getting exploited and so men go out into this reality where everything's trying to take them everybody's trying to take your juice and put it as part of their plan they're trying to put 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 chains on you and make engage them with your labor and take your juice and they, and use you for their aims and then what you manage to do is you manage to create the space you engage with this reality you engage with the reality you you struggle with the fear and you overcome it and then you create the space and then you establish your kingdom in there and then what happens is you have space to let out your creation creative juice and that's an amazing thing to happen so what you start doing is making statues that represent your mythological visions you you bring out your art you're the one who gets to tell the story because if you're not the king if you're a slave you don't really get to tell a story and then what happens is because you're you've created this civilization you get to release your story you get to build your statues and it becomes this brilliant powerful experience a, a celebration that you've overcome the chaos of the world and that is achieved when you actually face it you develop that courage and it gives this profound energy to your art that's why we look back at stuff like greece where it's this shameless proud stances that they're throwing this this shameless belief in themselves this this ultimate paradigm of beauty because they were some of the very first people to properly establish firm powerful civilizations out of the chaos of nature and so their art their high art was some one of the f first few times in history we saw these bubbles open up and this beautiful creative spirit have enough space to release its power you know and people talk about meaning crisis and postmodernism and all that, and they lose touch with they, they 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 make it intellectual. They they lose touch with the the just the foundational truth about what we're saying here is that things did not happen in a sort of nice way, and our meaning crisis is not something we need to like rationally figure out per se. It's that what what caused us to give so much meaning to our art in the past and our philosophy in the past was the fact that we fought so hard for it that it was such a statement of pride that we overcame stuff and now it's been thousands of years since we've really had to fight for our civilization it's been so long since we've really fell back into that fundamental reality and saw it viscerally and understood that our ability to express ourselves is the statement of our great conquest of the fallen world that is so far from us that we we lose touch with the meaning of everything and we 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 lose the philosophical foundations and we start to question ourselves and Nietzsche noticed this pattern too is that you know the great romans take over and um, the italian peninsula as like warriors they they copy the greeks build them make themselves look beautiful put up statues of themselves and then over time their sons and daughters get decadent because they're so rich they, they you know the, you know the meme a uh, strong man create good times good times create weak men that type of thing they create the bubble and then of course the gods come and burst the bubble on them because because they get soft they start to doubt they get decadent they start to become nihilistic towards their thing and so 
that's that's representative of that that virtue going incorrect that's representative of that virtue mm -hmm. of of um that virtue of of gravitas going wrong and so this shows you the value in something like gravitas it is a powerful way for us to get back in touch with what we are it gives us a powerful foundation to understand the value of everything we do and this is why as i said nietzsche would be so prone on pointing out self-deceptions because self-deception fundamentally is 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 pernicious it it eats away at the meaning of everything when you create this fake rationalized um complex way of seeing things that's not grounded in the gravitas of fundamental reality what happens is it, is it actually falsifies everything it makes the world fake you know it makes the world not real it makes it, what you're doing not real if you tell yourself the, the reason that the way your civilization was organized was a load of people being nice to each other when fundamentally it was something that was one against nature something you you violently took from nature it's something you created you know if you create that falsification eventually it it destroys the the sole foundation of your your civilization and people can't really fight for it anymore because they don't understand they can't feel it anymore because there's no gravitas to it it becomes as i said this sort of uh, intellectualized naive uh, incorrect floaty head in the air notion and what happens is eventually it might run for a long time but then reality will come in and crush it as i said the goths show up with when rome when they get out of touch with their foundational principles and the, the foundational energy and story that drove um, drove rome up into the air then the goths come in and burst that bubble and it's horrible suddenly they are getting enslaved for the first time in thousands of years so the, the the fractal nature of this is that it, it happens in society it also happens in a person as well like a, a a young lad has that problem where he's in this naive intellectualized bubble because he's in the civilized world of his dad or his parents and whatnot who, who they've created and then he has to go out into the world and actually experience the the savagery of the world the fact that people are like you know his dad's always like feeding him and then you go out into the world and then suddenly people just don't feed you you're like what this is a mean place and people try to exploit you and people try to trick you you know and people People try to manipulate you and then suddenly you start to realize oh my god the world's a nasty place and i need to look out for myself i need to know what i'm doing but as much as that can be difficult and you can get sort of angry at your dad you know you can get angry at your dad and be like oh you didn't teach me and whatnot and you didn't give me the gravitas and all that once you go out there and face the gravitas confront the dark reality realize that things are blunt and hard and uncertain and you're not sure what to do find the ability to believe in the fact that there is a logos again there is a truth there is a way forward it will be very hard take a very long time but you you will be able to do it. it there is hope and then start to build from there you develop this grounded confidence you develop this and you actually do it you develop the courage to actually face it and then you start to get the results you get courage and excellent that's the true meaning of virtue what you start to see is this massive evolution in your character because you stop resenting for example your father you see that he's created that civilization you you stop resenting everything you start to focus on the fact that like you know god has a plan god has a way the world works in a way that is a uh, that god has ordered and you can obey that and that will bring you forward in some sense and then um, this this gives you the platform for which you can start building your character and this shows us the foundation for the central myth of of what it means to be a man and that is initiation like the difference i guess between a, a woman and a man joseph campbell said was that uh, a woman gets initiated into fundamental reality when she's about 13 and suddenly blood starts running out between her legs because it's saying now you are a woman that just happens it's not something that you know she she gets nature happens to her it, whereas men don't have experiences like that we can kind of remain a bit stiff and up in our head for well into our 30s or 40s if we wish because we don't get anything that grabs us by the, the neck and says you are designed to breed or reproduce you have a fundamental purpose do it you know and it's the same with them um, and so that's that's a really really difficult problem for men in some sense and so i guess men are also adapted to a an even more intense idea too whereas they are designed for war they're designed for death like men are designed to to be the violent outward extension of the world and then women have that that nourishing power to take the kingdom and make it beautiful strong and proud they have that almost like the artistic feminine quality where they build up the statues and then the men guard the borders that type of thing and so the thing about that is that the male as i said grows in these bubbles and he needs that bubble burst he needs that gravitas and his soul will murder itself if it does not get that and then um, there's this awful issue where 
in the small tribe, you know, that you would have this problem where if a guy doesn't get this bubble burst, he gets arrogant and he starts like, you know, uh, being sarcastic, being difficult with people because his his animus is his soul is asking for asking for status. It's demanding that he starts fighting against stuff. It's it's looking for boundaries. It's looking for chaos. You know, it wants chaos. It wants touch points with reality. It wants to be stalled. I think I've mentioned before. Um, Again, Conor McGregor and John Kavanaugh and Conor McGregor came into John's gym and he was just beating everybody up. And so eventually John had to like go in and humble him. And so John bet the crap out of him. And that 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 was, you know, one of those grounding moments where Conor was like, all right, this guy's the higher authority than me. He's the bigger gorilla than me, that type of thing. And so that's that's a, an absolute requirement towards taming a male and getting a male's head straight and getting a male in touch with reality because as i said we have a propensity towards avoiding it society is literally premised on the idea of protecting you from reality and you going out into reality is not an easy thing you literally could risk death like it's hard to do that and so the the society's rituals actually come up with strategies in order to get people back in touch with it they're like all right well what we're going to do is we're going to send the, the boy, he'll be hanging out with his mum in the hut, and then we're going to put on the faces of the gods, the gods as in the natural forces in the world, the lion a god, the wind god, the thunder god, the death god, and then they're going to run in and they're going to like grab the kid, shove the mother away, so rip him from the womb, shove the mother away, drag him out into the, the courtyard of the, the village tribe and beat the crap out of him. And the kid will be like all afraid and he'll be screaming because he's been told all these stories like one day the, the the gods run in and eat the baby and he's like oh my god it's about to happen i'm about to get eaten i'm about to get eaten by the gods and then eventually he'll start fighting back he'll he'll have to he'll be sitting there and he'll be facing this immense charge of fear and this immense con confrontation with the awkwardness and weirdness of reality and something he's not he's not seen before and then what will happen is um he'll have to stand up and he'll have to confront it he'll have to stand up and he'll have to he'll have to experience that charge of crisis that charge of fear he'll have to experience that dipping down into chaos into the fallen reality and then this this big kick of fear and that emotion his adrenaline will shoot up into him and what he'll have to do is he'll have to do that thing that virtuous thing which he'll have to take that fear digest it digest the negativity the problem the fear the anx anxiety and he'll have to act courageously he'll have to stand up and fight back he'll have to push back and so they goad him they try get him to punch back and eventually he does and when when he punches back that's the second that they stop they take the mask off him and they shove it onto they take the mask off them and they shove it onto his face and then suddenly what you see is that he has by showing virtue overcome the inner psychological challenge the emotional challenge he's if you want to say like he's just got, he's he's shown himself how to physiologically correctly react to fear and they train him with the initiation that that's something you have to do and that burst his bubble now they slap the thing on and he says now you're a man now you're a guardian against the gods now you are in, in a sense one of the gods you're one of the people who understands that this is how serious reality is and that's a little you know it's like a vaccine if you will so you've got the 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 the, the disease which is reality or the <laughs> very appropriate metaphor the disease which is reality is out there and it can kill you it's very dangerous but if you get um, a very small version of the disease it can build up your immune system to it and it's like this with initiation it's psychologically if you just kind of get them to do the right thing in a sort of simulation if you get them to act courageous in this circumstance it shows them the correct behavior in all other circumstances involving fear and fear is of course this profound universal now that's an unbelievably intelligent thing because they're shoving him into reality so that he develops virtue and gravitas and that is how you become a man as i said the roman virtue always gets attached to the idea of veer which is what a real man was to the romans now this is an interesting question because these rituals were in place everywhere but they're not in place for us we don't have this we don't have a psychological ritual that does that for us. Now, we, we've sort of built a couple of them. Like the movie Fight Club is an attempt to do that. And it, literally MMA gyms have, are really good places to start doing that because you do face these type of chaoses. But you, this is why I'm always saying stuff like detect fears in your life. And I need to live by this a hundred times more. Detect fears in your life and go confront them. And it, it builds your character. It, it really does. Like I noticed just visceral differences in the way I thought when I um, confronted more of those fears. And I noticed that some people that are, are 
most certainly you can kind of detect it in people that they lack that edge that they would crack under pressure and they tend to talk a lot as well that one i tend to talk a lot so i'm no exception but they tend to over intellectualize over rationalize get get caught up in this this disembodied heady way of seeing things instead of um, and they they feel like they lack that fundamental that that grip of reality and whatnot and it's um it's a very very difficult thing to understand what to do about because in a society that doesn't do this in an organized way how do you engage this properly how do you how do you get people down to reality as i keep talking about stuff like the left brain as well like people have a propensity towards deception and delusion and how do you bring them down into reality because reality is something that actually bullies your mind out of the way like our problem is that we we do tend to rationalize and getting our, our, ourselves back to reality is something that almost always hurts and we almost always want to avoid and so to have a final punchy end note to this, I got a message this morning from someone who said, I think everything you're saying on all these these videos is brilliant. I love them. They're so engaging. They're so interesting. But um, the boyo and the juiciness makes it a bit esoteric, makes it a bit difficult for me to share with my friends. I share with my friends and they're like, what the hell are they? do they keep talking about a boyo for? What the hell is going on here? And, you know, I only really do it because it's funny and it's ridiculous. And I'm, I've got one of those types of sense of humor where I just like things to be absurd and a bit surreal. But um, over time, I've actually noticed that there is a profound implicit philosophy. And I'm not much of a person to believe in philosophies in a very firm way. But there is actually something that the word boyo that I was quite surprised the more I thought about it it kind of clicked with me I'm like oh, that's what it means that's the meaning of it all and then um, it is re like deeply related to what I'm saying here there's th the most human part of you is your inner child as Nietzsche would say you know the final manifestation metaphors of this the spirit is the inner child is the inner creator you know and as I keep saying you want to establish yourself in the danger of reality the chaos of reality you want to establish enough space so that you can release that creative energy as i said like reality is a an intense place as much as people want to tell you uh, make, make it sound like the world's a nice place it's always trying to crush in and exploit you and if you can create the 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 fence so that you can release creativity if you are grounded and have enough gravitas to release your creativity you'll feel fantastic about yourself it is the um achievement the 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 final re revealing a conquest of your soul as i said the problem is you're the na naive child and then you go out into the world and get crushed because you were like releasing your creativity and the delusion of your your father's safety but then what happens is you go out you experience the world you need to develop gravitas your dreams have to get crushed a little bit but then you create the space to actually manifest your dreams actually make them happen and that's the maturity of a man you know it's when he does fall into the world and become hard but then also find his inner shining child redeeming power again and uh, that's what I'd understand as the boyo because because <laughs> I don't I don't see it as something I see a lot of these you know mature tough guy men masculinity and all that and they're all kind of they're a bit um serious you know and I get that the world is a serious place. Like there's some seriously intense things going on. And by all means, I, I am promoting seriousness. I'm promoting gravitas. But there is a flip side of it where you have to have joy, creativity, madness. You need to have these type of things, the madness of a child. And um, that's sort of what I would grip and understand the boyo as. But I don't want to categorize it too firmly because upon putting a circle around it you destroy it you 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 cause it to die you 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 uh you grip to it too tightly and it slips out of your hands it, it crushes or something like that so no more to be said about that but i am pointing to this notion that your inner soul your human spirit your animus wants to get released and if you can achieve that it's the most human part of you not the part of you that rationalizes and creates theories that's just your i guess you could call it something perhaps like your forebrain and that's this is an interesting thesis because most of what we understand is the 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 western perspective on what humanity is like descartes suggests that your thinking forebrain your rationalizing theoretical brain is what you are whereas the roman conception the nietzschean conception and the jungian conception is that you are something deeper you are this sort of soul thing they call it Nietzsche would call it that fiery energy that wants to shoot out and the Romans called it literally they called it the animus that is what the soul was it was that animating energy that moves subconsciously out of you you know that's a way more intelligent way of seeing things and the reason why I say this is actually based on a premise of mental health 
I get boyos in now and I, you know working with boyos working with them taking them on being like all right let's let's get projects finished because a lot of dudes come up to me and and they're like uh, I want to develop my character I want to get creative things done and all this stuff and you're like all right cool so let's actually just sit down and get it done like let's set a goal and actually get it done and make sure it's good quality like let's let's actually manifest this thing instead of talking about it let's actually you know bring these ideas into reality get stuff finished get output these type of things and then um, you sit down with a, a dude and you you work with him and then after a while he, he just starts finishing stuff he starts getting output you know or even like uh in other uh, fields like you have a, a salesman who's just can't get his numbers up and you sit down and just make those numbers go up by doing the right things and what happens is when you achieve that conquest there's this uh this when you actually you know get that really energetic creative output starting to happen you you notice that um there's a healing quality to it you know um one of the dudes i'm working with was saying that it's 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 almost like he, he had depression before and he's noticed that it's um lost its edge a little bit like it's um it's maybe that's not the white or quite the right way to describe it but it was almost like uh the depression comes in and, and says you're not good enough and and has all these like inner thought thoughts telling you that you're not good enough and whatnot and putting you down but then when you can look at you having achieved this creative conquest which your soul was aching for for years you kind of look at these you know these stacks of paper where you finish something and you think to yourself i actually am good enough on some level or i've achieved something i don't know what it is but it's there's a healing thing and it's not a really a rational thing you don't think it true too much you just feel it and it's almost like your soul realizes it's pulled something out it's actually achieved that great struggle which is you know the fall into the gravitas and heaviness of the world the depressing cynical pessimistic heaviness of the world and then you've actually true discipline will true energy true true positive feelings as well you've actually managed to actualize your potential actualize your soul release your inner child release your boyism release your happiness your joy and your health and that's a unbelievably cathartic experience and that interests me a lot because the whole premise of a lot of these psychologies and these psychiatries and even the modern scientific theory of the mind is that your mind the reason why you suffer and you're in pain and the reason why you've got the depression and mental health issues and anxiety and all this stuff is um you don't have the right concepts in your head to describe what's happening, you know? So when you're feeling sadness, you're supposed to think to yourself, oh, like, uh, I need to baptize it with a certain, um, like, concept. Like, this is a, a neurosis. This is a complex. This is a distorted thought pattern. This is a irrational belief and all this stuff. And I think maybe there's definitely something to that. But it's interesting that that's the level we try to fix these things. We think that the palace of our minds is incorrectly built and we try to rebuild the palace of the minds according to these psychologists. And these guys are only 100 years old. They don't have very much weight to a lot of what they're saying, you know, compared to, shall we say, the more ancient religious traditions like the Romans or like Christianity, which proposes that the reason why you suffer is because you have not aligned yourself with God and you have not released your Apollo or your Jesus Christ, your inner creative spirit and whatnot. And I, and I sort of notice it's like, I guess that's in some way what we're talking about here. Like, this is what the quote unquote boyoism is all about, is being like, you have that creative spirit. It's so rational. It's... Um, it's, it's, it's a felt experience and to redeem yourself, to redeem your life, you need to release that. And it's very, very simple. It's like there's your philosophical, complex, rational thesis for what you need to do. And it's actually quite simple. It's quite sophisticated on first principles. And it weirdly from not trying to solve that problem and just paying attention to what to what you are, you sort of I think you solve the problem. You 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 push away all that need for overcomplicated, jargonized categories uh, categorizations of your your head, thinking that you can put all these psychological categories into your head and be like animus um, soul or not soul animus uh, complex, you know, uh, anal complex or whatever Freud says and all that stuff, and you can shove it in and be like, right, I'm fixed now. That's what it works. Whereas really fixing yourself is almost like breaking yourself. It's like smashing the palace and letting the violent crazy tyrannical energies boil up and let them out and then just channel them and craft them and then have something manifest something in the world and there you're like there it is I've, I've actually done it and whatnot 
And so I guess that's the that's the implicit thesis of Boyoism. And uh, I, I I guess like <laughs> not to get too too elaborate, but if you got enough people doing this, because this is what people don't do anymore. Their creative energy gets injected into this bad boy here, or it gets injected into you know the the the, the narratives of like oh what's going on in politics and all this stuff and what's going on in you know it, you, your creative energy gets injected into things that are palaces that are someone else's palace or maybe just a whole nonsense palace you know like trying to intellectually figure out something that doesn't need to be intellectually figured out as much as you think and it makes really makes you wonder is like if we actually all um brought our energy brought the inner boyo together and, and built up this big charge a big culture of this big charge how much would it um how much would it set things in the right direction it's almost like why can't why aren't we able to just believe in ourselves believe in our inner spirit believe in what we are believe in that animus this is what i'm getting at it with this whole frame of looking at the mind and you say this rational mind on top here and um, is the the you need to think your way you need to think all right what's the moral correct way of doing things and that's the way that will bring society forward why aren't we able to turn around and just say if we invest fully in this inner child creative energy and manifest it properly this inner juicy boy we manifest we let the juice out properly it is good and beautiful and true and justified it does do the right things it does it has a good will it's like the 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 idea of the tyrannical artist yes it is a little bit violent it is a little bit crazy it is a little bit mad but it fundamentally achieves what we wanted to achieve which is to show us that the world can be beautiful and that you can overcome the tragedy of life and that's a fascinating thesis because it it's it's not a rational fight against the the kind of complex palace but it's actually a reframe and i've always felt that if these problems had had any weight to them they'd survive many different reframes and it seems like a lot of this this thesis of what the mind is does not survive this reframe we know that we are like energy and fire and something something monstrous and animal like and we make the mistake of believing that what is human about us is up here but what really is human about us is the boil within. <laughs> and so um, without uh, going too mad and saying I, I have any idea what I'm doing because I don't, um, I I am looking for boils who are interested in actually investing in this stuff, manifesting this stuff out, getting stuff finished, artistic projects, actually, you know, taking all these character logical ideas and actually manifesting it as a persuasive character that actually does this stuff well. People who can storytell. I want way more of these people showing up and whatnot. So if you're interested, link in the description. You can join the boils. You'll get a lovely page, all colorful. I made it all nice so you just enjoy it and whatnot. And, um, and there you go. That is everything from me. Thank you very much. I hope this brought immense amount of juice. I hope it was a hot take on the current uh, climate and whatnot. And stay fucking juicy.